Good morning, folks. Day two, episode two of the 1973 Honda CD175 restoration. Got the bike back to base here yesterday. Thanks, Kevin Bryan. Um, right, where do I start? Uh, fuel tank. Uh, you've seen the pictures of the stuff that's come out of it. It's basically varnish, isn't it? From a uh, 46 year old fuel that's been left in there. Probably a, fuel t a full tank at some point. So. That combined with the inner lining of the fuel tank, I guess it's shot. I'm going to try possibly electrolysis on it. I have some fluids I can pour into it to see if it leaks straight off the bat. But there's um, there's no way of really sorting out that petrol cock until I get fluids in it. Um, that's another matter. Right, the exhaust pipes. I need to keep the down pipes. That is a must. Um, so I have them here. What I'm going to do is cut off. Apparently you cut off, just be, just behind the crimp, there, you cut off and then you grind off all of this. And this pipe, the new pipe then slides in into the new the new mufflers, which I'm going to try and source them somewhere. I think David Silver Spares here in the UK sell those, so I'm going to look into that. So it's um, exhaust mufflers, possible fuel tank, and front wheel, definitely need a front wheel. Uh, this one is absolutely cooked. Uh, I'm going to salvage the hub if I can, but the rim's shot away. There's only about 12 spokes actually holding the, the hub onto the onto the wheel rim, so that needs to be to be uh, sourced. Uh, yeah, so I gave everything another uh, large dosing of of uh, penetrating fluids last night just to so I can try and get the headlight the headlight cowl off without snapping any more bolts off. I think we snapped off three or four bolts yesterday nothing serious i've got tap and die sets and drills and everything so that's not a bad thing um well this is basically my first classic uh, bike that i've ever had uh, my stepfather used to own one so it's a lot of sentimental value in, in in getting this thing up and running um i'll put a picture of him on his blue uh, cd175 uh, on just after the, this start video uh, today so you can have a look at the image that's been in my mind for the last sort of 45 years. So this is this is more than a challenge for me. This is this is from the heart. This one. So anyway, uh, enough of me uh, getting all blubbery. Um, right? Can you guys help me out, please? If you look at the rest of my videos, uh, I've done one or two. Uh, I've restored a few bikes over the years. You can you can see the ones that I've done there. Um, so you can see what I'm used to restoring. This is a different ball game, isn't it? Not the condition of it. I've had uh, a Honda Deville uh, in pretty much the same condition. Um, but any hints and tips, anything you can offer advice-wise, you've seen the condition of the engine block and head. It's powdery aluminium. Uh, so I need to do something to that. Oh, I don't know whether to go down the aqua blasting route or just my brass brush just to get rid of the loose uh, material and, and the corrosion and the fur off of it there's also the the frame number you guys i don't know if you guys have been following the, the photographs on some of the groups I, I, i'm on the the frame number is almost illegible uh i have sort of uncovered it but some people say oh, it's been tampered with. It's been tampered. no. This is a genuine, genuine barn find. Trust me. Um, it's just been sat for forty odd years in a, in a back garden under a leaking gutter. Hence, the, and the front end's taken the brunt of it. So luckily, the frame's fine. Uh, right, waffling must stop, and I must get on. Go and get yourself some brew, and uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to whip the carb off because it's completely frozen, the carburetor. The, even the choke lever won't go up and down. So that's going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner for a, for an hour or so. See what happens there. Um, yeah, grab yourselves a brew and uh, make a bit of toast. And I'm going to crack on and I'll catch you guys in a bit. Thanks again. Don't forget, drop me a line down below and uh, with all your hints and tips. Please help. Please. <laughs> Take it easy. Right, wiring loom before I take it out. Starts off, um, what is it, left hand side of the headstock. Runs back down and through. Picking up, picking up the, uh, the coil. 
supply there. And then down and it passes through under here, round to the right hand side of the bike. And then comes down and under, back up and through. And it was under there, round to the flush unit there. So let's very gently come on, just tease it, tease it out there. What's that there? Not sure about that. Let's pull that off of there. Come on, that's it. Okay, well, I've just got a few bits to disconnect there. I just wanted to make a men mental note, video note of where they... It's easy just to strip a bike down, but when you come, come to putting it back together, unless you've got visual records, it's sometimes tricky to get it right and uh, balls things up. Ah, looks like the rectifier's under there. I did wonder yesterday. All right, Brian, found it. It's under there, mate. <laughs> okay, right. Let's get on. Oh dear. <laughs> That's going to need some addressing, isn't it? Before I even attempt to take the flipping spark plug out. That is rotten in there. Mm. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm up against. Well, team, while this piece that was up under this box section of the frame there isn't actually a um, regulator rectifier, it's much earlier than that. It's the old ballast resistor. So, all of those of you just jumping up and down going, it's not a regulator. I know it's not a regulator, team. Okay, so that's that out of the way. I've managed to. Jimmy out the carburetor. Um, the slider's already uh, safe with the spring. But I mean, look at that. This is what I was on about, about the insides of, of the carb. It's flipping, it's new because it's, it's just done no miles. But it's absolutely proper seized. Now, where are we? It goes through there. Does that whole piece there supposed to go up and down like that inside to cut the air off and open it up? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this carb. I've never seen one of these before. Oh my god. It's a good catch, wasn't it? Canelin. Yeah, good. So that's going to be stripped. I mean, the rubber condition is absolutely brilliant. It's just so supple. Normally, this rubber stuff goes hard, doesn't it? As you guys will know. And girls, um, yeah, even that screw undid on the clamp, proper chuff with that. So I'm going to strip that down as best I can. What I might do first is, is pop it, take the rubber off, take the hose off, the drain hose, pop it in the um, ultrasonic cleaner for a little while, then try and undo some screws uh, and go on from there. I see that the float chamber is literally just a clip on affair. That's that's pretty good. So I need a rebuild kit for that. I need a engine gasket kit as well, won't I? Right. Onwards. And that is just... Oh, isn't this exciting? Right. Better crack on. Right. Here is the rear hub. This was all one lump. It's all seized. I put penetrating fluid around the sill and that underneath that lip all the way around there last night and I've just literally gently tapped it with my equaliser I can't do this with one hand can you see that it's actually it, it is moving believe it or not I know I'm tapping the whole thing around but it is moving uh, so I'm just going to pop this off in a minute and take a look inside oh, it is great isn't it do you really like it? Is it? Is it wicked? We're loving it, loving it, loving it. Well, as you guys will know, getting uh, the brake part out of the drum isn't easy because the 
the shoes try to sort of wedge in, don't they, and grip and, and, and that. But this, yeah, it's taken me 10 minutes, but, but I've got there. Look at that. So these linings are probably asbestos, aren't they, being 73? I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice surface. It's just got a bit of patina. Not that you want patina in your brake drums, but... Anyway, look at this. And let me just put that there. When it came out... <laughs> well, there is the asbestos actual lining material, and it's actually delaminated from on the actual alloy of, of the brake shoe itself. Uh, that's the leading edge. That's on the pivot there. That's the leading edge of the brake shoe. So two shoes, two, two retaining springs. These need to come out. That shaft needs to be tapped back out through this way and re-greased and cleaned. So there we go. That's, that's come on. I mean, if this bike had been ridden for 10,000 miles or whatever and, and, and that, that would have been a lot tougher. Because this is virtually blooming new, it's really not too much of an issue. I can, I know the bearings are going to be absolutely fine, aren't they? Because they are. Simple as that. Right. That's exciting. Right, so make us to do. What am I going to do next? Carburetor's off. That's going to go in the Sonic Cleaner. Where's the shoes out? Look at the condition of them, you know, spot on, isn't it? Now, can these get relined? You guys, do any of you know? Can you? Is, is there anywhere in the UK that relines brake shoes, especially motorbike ones? I don't know. I know it's cheaper to, to, to just go and buy something, but I don't like throwing money at things. I like to get things repaired. And this is the genuine brake shoe that came with this bike, so I really want to keep it stock, keep it as much. As near at 100% as I can. I know I've got to get a few other bits and pieces, but that's unavoidable, isn't it? But stuff like this would be nice to get them relined, wouldn't it? Okay, yeah, comment below, guys, please. Thanks very much. Oh, here's the old circlet pliers. Got the circlip off without much... Uh, that's all these are quite tricky. <laughs> you can appreciate guys, can't you? When you get it off, you end up with a bit bent up at the end and all that, but no, that one came off. Uh, really good so it's good isn't it I'm so excited about this some sort of wildlife in there Just that the, the lacquer's come off, hasn't it? And that's starting to starting to talc up, isn't it, a bit there? And that's fine. That's uh, it's perfectly acceptable. Of course, you've got the Kush Drive rubbers there. <laughs> They've done nothing at all, have they, so far? 46-year-old Kush Drive rubbers. Right, well, I'm going to get all that cleaned up, but uh, I must get the carburetor in there. I keep... You know what it's like? I do this, it's like, oh my god, look at this, I need to take this apart. Oh, oh god, I've got to do something on there, I'm halfway through the wiring loom. You, you get sidetracked, oh, they're off by the way. Uh, and, and it's just flipping exciting, I can't tell you. Um, so I'm going into uh, Henry Cole mode there. I've got to tell you, okay. Uh, sorry Henry. Uh, okay, so let's uh, waste no more time babbling and faffing around and get things blooming done easy. Crack on, son. Right, um, just doing, I've, I've got so many little bits and pieces dotted around now. I don't want to get snowed under with it. So what I'm doing is I'm adjusting every little tiny piece and then putting it in my basket of bits there uh, when done. Now, a bit of a tip for people that are just starting out uh, doing restorations and things. When you come across really stubborn bolts, exhaust studs, stuff like that, when you go to undo it, always, always, always try and tighten it first, okay? And then try and loosen it. If that ha doesn't work after two or three attempts, don't despair, get a bit of heat on it. I use one of these things. They're quite cheap, but they're very, very handy. So, yeah, there you go. So do up screws first, even on engine casing, 
uh, bolts. Get yourself a decent, um, where's mine, there it is, a decent um, impact driver and uh, just give it a short sharp tap. Make sure that the, the, the screwdriver bit that you require is a perfect fit for these screw heads. And they're not Phillips, so anything different is going to round them off. So a quick tap, you know, tighten, quick tap to tighten, and then a tap to release. And you should be good to go. Um, just something I've picked up over the years. It's a bit of a tip. Right, okay, let's crack on. Crack on, what the fuck's that? Right, I've got the ultrasonic cleaner uh, warming up. Just want it a bit, bit above freezing, really. Okay, I've got me, me soft equaliser on the, on the float bowl. There, and gently tapped it on one side, and it's revealed this, which is obviously, you can imagine this has been set up for so many years uh, that all that fuel has just evaporated, uh, and that's not too bad, to be fair. I thought that was going to be a lot worse than that. Now I've not actually. Name. It's pretty gunky, isn't it? But I'm going to put it in the parts cleaner anyway. Um, you're all going to be jumping up and down, all you um, experienced professionals, and you're going to say there is no way you'll be able to reuse that carb because there is no way you're going to be able to adjust the idle screw. And you know what? I think you're right. That is proper. This stuff is... These screws weld because it's still an aluminium. They weld as a chemical process goes on over the years. That is one, isn't it, guys? Um, I'm just going to see what happens with this. Uh, let's see how far I get. It's horrible, isn't it? I want to keep this bike as original as possible. So I'm going to try and resurrect this. Don't hold out much luck, to be fair. Doesn't look like the floats have perished. The main jet there. What's that on there? A hundred? That's a hundred, isn't it? Right. I don't know anything about this car, Brett. What is it? Twenty? What's that? Twenty-two mil? I'll tell you what. Let's find out, shall we? You're all shouting at me. Yeah, it's a 22 mil carburetor. I'm new to this bike. I don't know anything about it. On. Let's get this in there. Let's get that in there like so. What is that? Oh, it's a 22 mil carb. That was a good guess. Only because I've done a lot of reading up and I've... I don't remember things generally because I'm a bloke. You know what that's blokes are like, don't you? You get told by the missus something and then it's just like, what was that? But 22 mil carb is stuck. So that's, um, yeah, the, the Kinlin. Get in 22 mil carb that's actually proper snotty, isn't it? Is there anything supposed to be in there? Oh my God, I hope not. Where would the slider screw be? Let's have a look in the top. The idle screw. Yeah, that's all nice, isn't it? That's the beauty of this. It's so nice inside. Uh, there's the choke flap, which goes up and down. So that that piece there doesn't move. That's all solid. It's just that flap inside that comes up and opens and closes. Uh, that flap inside there. Can't really see it from that way. Can't see it from that way too. But where's the... Ah, uh, you see the little nipple down in there? That little pin down in there. I think that is the... Yes, it is. That is the idle screw. That's great, because as, as you screw it in, it, it pushes the, the slider up slightly. And as you unscrew it, there's a, there's a tapered chamfered edge on the slider, and it allows it... If you unscrew it, screw comes out, slider comes down to it. That's how you adjust your idle. Uh, right! Oops, I shouldn't really put that on there. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, I'm going to wait for that to get up to, I don't know, 30 or 40 degrees or so, and then pop that in for about 10 years, and, uh, and see how we get on. Right, okie dokie. Attempt in 
any of these brackets. These ones look bad, but these ones look badder. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. What am I doing? So, break of our 12mm socket, uh, plenty, of, uh, plenty of lube, and uh, I'm going to see what happens. If a uh, if encapsulated bolt head on the side starts spinning, angle grinder comes out, and they get whipped off, and I have the brackets. Right, let's see what happens. I can't absolutely believe that. Mind you, this is the good one. Yes, just need one. Okay, where's the nut? <clears throat> there it is. <laughs> well, it's going well. It's, uh, I'm not holding out, but there's literally nothing there, is there? But I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Fingers crossed. There's literally, literally nothing left, is there? Literally nothing left. Okay, well the carp has had a nice bath and you can agree things are looking a lot cleaner now. Uh, got to check that float, make sure it's okay. That's degunked, that was uh, crusty as you like. But I'm not having so much fun with the carburetor, sadly. The choke bar and butterfly is seized that is seized in there and that is seized in there I've managed to get the nut off and what I'm doing is really lubricating this a lot and I'm very very gently tapping I know I shouldn't tap on the threaded bolt guys it's just literally with my toffee hammer just gentle taps this end and that end I'm just trying to break that seal 
these bits snap off so easily, as you quite probably know. Uh, give it any beans, and that just shears off. That shears off, and it's and it's a paperweight, isn't it, basically? But uh, yeah, I mean it was clean to start with, but uh, so now I'm just trying to just look okay. Mm -mm -mm. Just trying to work work this to free it up because it's uh, it's a new carb otherwise. Okay, Koki. Oh dear. Giggity, a giggity. Uh, bingo, slingo. <laughs> Let's get some light on the subject. Oh yeah! <laughs> I didn't think it would take a lot to do that, but it was proving a swine. But these cast alloy bits, they just fracture and split and you're just left with a whole pile of gunk. I am so happy now, I'll tell you what. That's a good hour well spent just gently tapping, just just literally vibrating it backwards and forth, backwards and forth. And then I started working on this edge, just tapping it up and tapping it back down just gently. This, if you grab hold of this and put it, it just bends because it's very soft. So literally that was a labour of love and honest to God, I could not be happier now. That is brilliant. Right, I might try reassembling. I'm going to check that, uh, check the float there. Where are we? There. Check that. Make sure it still floats. And uh, yeah, give it, a, give it a good hour just to soak. I've been spraying it with all sorts of stuff and things. So I think the ultrasonic cleaner did its job to start with. Um, it's bought the, the, the parts up well. I'm just going to get my compressor going, get the airline out, and go through the jets. I did notice that this this tube there. The main, uh, the drain uh, hole that that's blocked. Not not drain hole. What is that? Is that the feed? No, no. Where's the feed going then? There's the feed there, isn't it? I'm talking about. But from past experiences, if this tube here is blocked, carbs generally are a bit cank. Anyway, I might be completely wrong then, talking completely out of step. But on um, my old Suzuki, those pipes are blocked and it did not work, and I had to literally get some of these babies into these tiny weeny weeny little little loo brushes little pipe brushes they are brilliant great investment if you're doing stuff like this it's very fiddly so yeah i'm going to get the get the jet out that's the jet in the end there that's the hold i'm going to get that out i'm going to check that jet in there blow it through make sure we've got uh, good air going through there. that one's all fine with a with a needle sits in there um yeah i've already jetted put the wd-40 through that uh, needle hole down there and it sprays out of there lovely so that's all good carburetors just a chunk of metal no they're very complicated bits of kit to be honest but anyway i can't be happier game on let's crack on with something else well the emulsion tubes okay let's clean all the holes out yeah that's spot on Where are we? There we are. Yeah. Good. We've got four holes this side. Can you see them? There we go. Yeah, it's all good. That's all good. So, main jet's good. Right, I'm going to start reassembly and uh, see if we got flow of fuel for it. Superb. Right, well, I have the main jet out, which is right in the middle there, and I've got that jet out. It came out. That one there. Beautiful. You know, after all these years I've been sat in there, oops, can't believe that just came out like that. Where are we? <laughs> right, I need to put a pipe cleaner through there. I managed to get that out as well. That's your mixture screw. Okay. Now! You remember from earlier, this little blighter. That's the only thing I've got left to do now. I'm to try and somehow hold the flipping camera. Let's see how close I can get into it. No, it's not focusing. Uh, right, okay. 
I'm not gonna do this. How am I gonna do this? But I do 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 it's like Let's do it like that. Very gently, very gently clamp that in there. I've got a piece of cloth there to stop the, the jaws of the vice marking the alloy. Right then, you little monkey. This comes out. This is the last resort. This is the last hurdle, really, for this carb. I can't really focus properly. Right, come on, baby. I'm trying to move it both ways. Shut the back door. Look at that. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Now, just be careful when you take this screw out because it is spring loaded. Right, that's not going anywhere. Finish it off with my fingers. Ooh, there, missus. Sounds a bit rude. There we go. There's the spring. Wow. This, I mean, this is just the uh, the idle screw. You you screw it in, and it, like I say, on the on the slider, there's a chamfered 45. You know all about that. And the more you screw it in, the more it pushes the slider up. Let's more fuel in. Idles higher. Uh, unscrew it. Let's the slider down. Closes off the fuel a bit. Makes it tick, tick over a bit slower. I am over the moon. Right, it's enough of this carburetor nonsense. Let's get it sorted. Right, it's enough of the carburetor. Let's get back to the, these downpipes. Now, this collar, I think, needs to be... Well, I know it needs to be cut because I've already just cut this one. I've cut the collar and I've got that collar off of there. And this piece simply slides off. So that was the old muffler. See, and that's how the old muffler was held on to the front pipe so I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna leave this collar on there it's, it's been tack where it, it's been um, electrically welded in four places spot welded so I'm gonna hoping that that is enough to go into the new mufflers and clamp them up right now to clean them up and get them looking somewhere shiny do you reckon I can do that what do you reckon what's the odds on that <laughs> the way things are going pretty good no, no, that's proper grained in, isn't it? That that bit's not so bad. I'll come up there. Right, I'm going to get, I'm going to cut that collar off of there. Do the same with that one, and then get on with cleaning them and see what see what happens. Okie dokie. Right, well that second one was the right monkey to get off, but got it off. I have. Right, so now I'm going to get these two in the parts cleaner and just see what I can do. Most of that will come off, that orangey stuff. Uh, this is the good pipe, actually. This is the good one. I'm expecting good things of that. So let's, get that let's get that soaking in there. Lovely. Let's get some of that on there. Here's, here's the bad one. Now, what I think has happened is... I reckon one of the valves were in the open position... The inlet valve and the exhaust valve must have been on the... What would that have been on? It wouldn't, would it? Because you've got... And, uh, no. Anyway, so somehow, this is this is fuel, I reckon. I reckon it's... The carburetor, you know, is, gave way and uh, let the fuel through. Down and it's run down and it's just... So that stuff should... Treacly stuff should come off. But again, that's not very good, is it? Well, let's get that in there. Give that a darn good soak in this mixture I've got in this parts cleaner is basically part clean, parts cleaner fluid and there was a little bit of brake cleaner in there as well because I was doing lots of uh, pan-European stuff and, and Deville stuff now these are the, uh, the exhaust collets which apparently fall apart and I was expecting nothing to be there but where the bike is pretty much new I mean that's just that, that paint varnish isn't it so I'm expecting good things of these. That's number two. Same again. Let's give it a good douse. And uh, three and four. That's a bit rustified. So we'll sort that out. And number four there. Look at that. 
spot on. Anyway, when you're doing stuff like this with a parts cleaner on, uh, on like chrome, use a brass brush because it doesn't score the metalwork underneath. Alright, so that nasty great big wire brush can come out of there. This is a plastic one, that's quite good as well for removing crud. And of course, the old favourite, the toothbrush. Right, I've got things to clean, so uh, yeah, let's see how they come out. It's a shame I can't video whilst I'm doing it, but uh, I'm going to have to sort out some sort of camera system. This is just on my phone, um, which is a pain. Oh, mind you, I've got a Ghost Drift X camera. I'll see what I can do, because it'd be nice for you to see you know, me actually doing something, instead of just going, oh look, I fixed it. You know, <laughs> but anyway, onwards and upwards. Whew. Right, team. Uh, that's it for the day. My neck's hurting. Muscles of my neck are tearing at me before I'm like that all the time over the over the parts washer. Coming on alright, aren't they? Well, the good one is anyway. I still might have to um, just rough them up a little bit. Watch it, geezer. And uh, VHT paint them because it's uh, the, the, the chrome's there in places, but it's not constant, it's not enough. I don't want a concourse bike, I'm going to be riding this bike every single day, so it's not going to be a show bike, it's just going to be a used bike, um, so I can't really be too fussy with it. Uh, yeah, like I said, the chrome's gone, so there's, there's no point in trying to rescue it. Um, I've got a couple more little tricks up my sleeve, but on the, on the second pipe, it's, it's proper expanded that crusty rust there, so... Anyway, I think I'm lucky, really lucky to have been able to manage to save those two. So, you know, you can get hold of the mufflers just about. So that's not bad. Anyway, it's enough of me waffling on. You must be sick of my voice by now. Right, I'm going to put my... No, I'm not. I'm going to go out on my Himalayan for a little ride just to cool off and chill out and just kick back a bit because it's been a long couple of days. Okay, guys, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you look forward to part three of this uh, series. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.